It's been said that what's non-traditional at most colleges is traditional at George Mason University. Maybe that's because there are no ivory towers here. Instead, three vibrant campuses so deeply ingrained in the community and industry of the Washington, D.C. area that they are at once beneficiary and benefactor. One of the primary reasons for all of our successes over the short period of time are our innovative and entrepreneurial approach to academic and service activities, and second, our location. George Mason University is fortunate to be in the nation's capital, the world's capital, and we take advantage of this location in any way that we can. What started with 17 students in 1957 has grown to become one of the most respected learning institutions in one of the most important places in the world. Its mission remains clear, to prepare a diverse population of students to think, to work, to serve, and in all ways to succeed in a rapidly changing world. I love George Mason for a number of different reasons. I really enjoy it for the diversity that we all share. You can walk into the main student union building and find people speaking eight different languages. We have students from over 140 countries at George Mason University. It's our students from all over the world, and it's the diverse nature of our students from here, from Northern Virginia and the greater Washington area. That's special. These are the Vaca people, the forest people, and they're doing a leaf mask dance for hunting. For Mason, its relative youth provides an open mind and novel approaches, such as its many centers of education and research that target emerging and dynamic areas, like the Center for History and New Media or the National Center for Biodefense, run by world-renowned expert Ken Alibek, which is finding new ways to combat deadly diseases such as anthrax and smallpox. George Mason University is one of a very small number of universities where these type of innovative projects could be implemented with a very high speed. There's evidence there that they studied the sky as well. Sometimes innovation comes in the form of a building, Take aptly named Innovation Hall. Wired and wireless, it provides top teaching technology to all of Mason's departments. Only a few paces away, the Johnson Center, a student building that breaks the rules by mingling library books and food. The Johnson Center totally rocks. If I could, I would take all my classes in the Johnson Center, eat, drink, and sleep here if possible. The vibrant feeling here is unbelievable. Start clicking each faculty member. You should get what I have up here. Adept at adapting, George Mason moved quickly to accommodate the region's burgeoning IT industry, providing the first engineering school built on information technology and opening the way for pioneering research. Another growing regional need has been for government officials and executives to acquire new skills. It's really been a perfect fit. I'm able to take the, the coursework and apply it immediately to what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. George Mason does not try to be all things to all people. Instead, it nurtures a strong liberal arts core while focusing on a number of areas in which it can excel and that serve the needs of the region. What you bring to these young people is often something that you can see at the end. You can see them grow while they're here. You can see their understanding of the world around them uh, grow richer. You can see them understand that they live in culture and in history. Focus on excellence has propelled Mason School of Public Policy to generate ongoing local growth data upon which the whole region relies. And the law school, barely a quarter century old, now ranks in the top 50 in the nation. Solid focus has resulted in excellence in other areas too. The university has no intercollegiate football team, yet boasts Division I basketball teams which have made several trips to the NIT and NCAA tournaments in recent years. The university has always worked hard to attract the very best experts in their field, and that commitment has made the university a magnet for top students too, 
each year, attracting thousands of applications for just a few hundred positions. I think the students are drawn here because of the faculty, the attention they get, the mentoring that happens here. The people who get B compensate the losers. And from Nobel Prize winning economists Vernon Smith and James Buchanan to Pulitzer Prize winner Roger Wilkins, the reasons such uncommon faculty have come to Mason have a common theme. What impressed me about uh, GMU and the real reason that I ended up coming here was because I felt that this was a much more entrepreneurial university, both in the way it ran itself, in its connection with the community. As Mason has drawn from and fed the business world around it, the university has forged strong alliances and partnerships. Lockheed Martin does depend on George Mason University for many of our courses. So if you'll just breathe normally for me. What's special at George Mason for me today is the pride that our students, our faculty, our staff, and our alumni have in this institution. That the world will continue to change and challenge has never been more certain. Equally certain is George Mason's drive to produce the ideas and the people that will enrich its region, state, and nation.